idea the Chinese are proposing mm. is prosperity. China, they've given $100 billion to Pakistan. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. And so, so they have a very clear vision about what they're trying to do. And it's a powerful, it's a powerful idea. It's not, uh, it doesn't have, it's not that it doesn't have a basis. Mm -hmm. But from our perspective, I think we need to have an idea that provides pros prosperity. Of course, there is, a, there is a defense angle to it, mm -hmm. but there has to be an economic angle to it. Right. And currently, I don't see the economic angle to it. So in, in you know. Our relationship with the United States, yeah, for example. Yeah. Uh, is hugely about defense. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's moving that way. Clearly. More and more. More and more. I mean, when we talk to the Americans and the Americans talk to us, we talk about defense. Yeah. We don't talk about, okay, how do we jointly create prosperity and create a democratic model mm -hmm. that can make people rich. And does that worry you? Worry me, yeah. It does. Yeah. America defends and uh, defends one vision. Mm -hmm. And China is placing another vision on the table. Mm -hmm. Now, where I have a problem mm -hmm. is when the West speaks about China mm -hmm. and when the United States speaks about China, mm -hmm. they always talk about stopping China's rise. So they have a sense that you have to stop this mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But my question is, what alternative are you giving? Mm -hmm. right? if, if China's promising prosperity, mm -hmm. Uh, you can't say to India mm. that, look, we will have a defense pact mm. and we will fight with China mm -hmm. without the prosperity part of it. Mm. Right? Mm. And so to, the Indian trade has to continue. Well, mean? so to me, the real question mm -hmm. is if there is an alternative vision, mm -hmm. that vision needs to actually create prosperity. It needs to create wealth. There are two competing visions now on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one is the Western, India's a part of it, which is a maritime vision. Mm -hmm. And the other is a terrestrial vision, the Belt and Road, and a, a terrestrial planet, mm -hmm. where most of trade moves from China through the old Silk Road to Europe, mm -hmm. and China dominates that trade. Right. Those, that's, the, that's the clash. And that's what China is building. Mm -hmm. And what China is offering to the countries around it uh, is the idea of prosperity. Mm -hmm. So China is saying, allow us to build your infrastructure, allow us to put in <laughs> the, the communications backbone, allow us to put in 5G, allow us to put in all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We'll give you the money, you build your infrastructure, and then we will have prosperity together. Mm -hmm. That's what they offer. And? Right? And it's a very powerful thing to offer, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not in our interest. You know, it's not in India's interest that China uh, expands out like this. Why? Because we're on the way to Europe? Or uh, just because we're physically there? Or... Is it a rivalry, a civilizational rivalry? I don't see it as a civilization ri rivalry, but it will have severe consequences for India. The first level of monopoly mm. is the media monopoly. Mm -hmm. I think uh, what someone said, 140, 160 uh, media entities owned by one person. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So you have a media monopoly, mm -hmm. and then you have multiple monopolies, uh, business monopolies. That's right that provide finance to the BJP. Mm -hmm. right. So that's, uh, that's what we're facing. So how would you maneuver this? This is, this is so kind of hegemonic and so all-encompassing in this description. The only way to face it is by going directly to the people, which is what the Congress Party did uh, before independence. That's the only way to face this. So back to Gandhi. Back to Gandhi. Social movement, protest movement, massive. Yeah, and there's a lot, there, lot of appetite for that. There's a lot of atmosphere for that. Mm -hmm. And the Congress Party uh, needs to redesign itself to absorb that energy and use that energy to create a new vision for the country. I don't believe that uh, the large social media companies mm. are neutral. 
Mm-hmm. I just don't believe that. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, at least my experience in Indian politics. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I can give you. I can give you examples. I'll give you one personal example, mm-hmm. where uh, on my Twitter account, mm-hmm. I was getting forty thousand new users a day. Mm-hmm. Right? And then I went to a uh, a girl was raped in Delhi, mm-hmm. a little know, yes. a Dalit mm-hmm. girl, and I went there and I did a protest, mm-hmm. and magically my Twitter users went to zero. Mm-hmm. They went from 40,000 a day to zero. Mm-hmm. Right? And we wrote to Twitter and said, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Like, Please explain this to us. Mm-hmm. No answer. They said, we don't have the data. We don't understand this. We are checking. Three months later, we decided to get in touch with the Wall Street Journal. Mm-hmm. And we told the Wall Street Journal this. And a day before the Wall Street Journal article was coming out, it went back to 40,000. Yeah, that's interesting. That's my experience. Right? Yeah. Now, it's the same. It's the same with WhatsApp. I I don't believe that these are neutral uh, platforms. Yeah. Right. So what is the, to be the, done the, about that? For example, the head of Facebook has never never met an Indian opposition leader. Yes. Uh, right. He comes. He meets the prime minister. Goes home. A a a. I think the CEO of the, of Facebook was a BJP person. In, in Delhi, yes. In Delhi. Yeah, that's right, so why are we imagining that this thing is, is a neutral entity? It's not. We did, we did Narega, mm-hmm. right? Uh, most people think Narega is a handout to poor people. No, I don't, but yeah. You know, but yeah, most, yeah, if you yeah, ask most yeah. Indian people, what is this Narega? They'll say, well, you know, why are you giving, why are you making people uh, lazy? Why are you giving them, you know, money in their pocket, etc.? Mm-hmm. Et Actually, Narega was a labor market intervention, mm-hmm. right? And Narega created a massive reaction yes. in Indian farmers. It was a, it was a very powerful move, mm-hmm. but it created a particular reaction. Mm-hmm. Right? And then that reaction feeds in to what comes after. Democratic contest mm-hmm. depends on certain structures. It depends on a election system that is free. Mm-hmm. It depends on a judiciary Mm -hmm. that is completely independent. Mm -hmm. It depends on a press that is fair. And very importantly, it depends on the type of money that different political formations have. Mm -hmm. Right? So if we are fighting an electoral contest Mm -hmm. and we are fighting the institutional structure of India, Mm -hmm. right? We've taken. we have taken things to the election commission mm-hmm. uh, and we get no response mm-hmm. right there are there are uh, you can see the press in india i mean the press if you look at the television in india there's one gentleman who's on it all the time nobody else mm-hmm. right so <laughs> i mean we know yes <laughs> that's you know you see one gentleman there and mm-hmm. and uh, he, he's the only gentleman who occupies that space mm-hmm. now in a, in a sort of 21st century environment mm-hmm. uh, where your means of communication is media, where your means of communication is uh, social media, mm-hmm. and they have total dominance over those, uh, of course it will affect the mandate. India, that is Bharat, is a union of states. And the implication of that is that there is an ongoing negotiation between this union of states, right? So in the Congress party, we we view India as a negotiation between its people. Mm -hmm. The RSS views India as a geographical entity. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the big difference. So for us, India comes alive when India speaks. And India dies when India goes silent. And what I see is going on is a systematic attack on the institutions that allow India to speak, right? Uh, Parliament, the election system, the democratic system, the basic structure of democracy is being captured by one organization. Mm 